Well, the Germans are continuing their assault here in the bulge area. Um, <laughs> they, uh, they ran out of supplies. And after punching a couple, of, a couple of holes in the French line, one of their most important attacks here, oh, sorry, here, coming into this hex here, uh, with some artillery there that they ended up capturing, etc., the uh, it was made completely out of supply, but by that point the French weren't spending supply, so they figured the French were very very low. Maybe they had enough for the artillery, but probably not enough for anything else. So they could just continue with their their uh, you know greater strength. No big shelling, just charge forward with men and, and attack. Uh, something bothers me about the game in that uh, just from thought. Uh, thought exercise here. It seems to me that that same kind of policy would probably work about as well with trenches. And what bugs me there is the shelling was part of the dampening of the effects of trenches. Now I know, but it's just sort of built into the system. It's not all, I, I know the 1915 has special rules for supreme artillery knocking the trenches out completely. But the reason the artillery fire was done was really to kind of disrupt the defenses enough you could attack, you could approach, and maybe not get completely slaughtered. And somehow it seems to me that if you didn't do that preliminary bombardment, if you didn't have uh, the firepower to do that, uh, sure, your attack is reduced, but the defender, most of his advantage didn't come from the heavy shells, etc. Now, if what we're talking about here with lack of supplies is no guns and bullets, you know, I don't know that any of the Western powers would have attacked, would have launched an assault in that, that condition. So it's kind of a, something feels wrong about allowing these in quite the way they do. There should be more penalty or something like that. There should be some serious disincentive. Uh, when both sides are out of ammo, basically. <laughs> But anyway, it's, you know, it's working out. It's certainly, you wouldn't go up against a, an opponent who is supplied if you could help it. Uh, but yeah, the Germans are, uh, you know, inching their way closer and closer to Paris for the Schlieffen plan uh, thing. They're, we're already within four. Now they're down to three. They get one more hex that gives them uh, several, a couple of shifts. And when I look at the strength point comparison, they are way ahead. They've really done a lot of damage uh, to the Allies by being able to stretch the line out and pick their attacks where they want it more than uh, was historical. And uh, I don't know. All right, as I enter into the Allied turn, I was placing the reinforcements. I noticed this piece here, this 4-4 uh, by a unit, this LHR able to tell this is the unit, although it was kind of a pain because of sorting issues. But it's listed here as a 134 infantry. Okay, great. Uh, maybe one, maybe the other is correct. Whatever. I'll, I'd leave it as this. But here's the other problem. It's also not, not marked as reduced, so it's hard to tell. Maybe this was corrected somehow in uh, later editions. But those are only online editions right now, as far as I know. This is the most recent copy. I got it right from the designer, so I would hope so. Uh, so it's just a warning. You may want to wait for a more recent copy if you like printed materials to be in their kind of best form. I think the current printed rules I'm told are fairly good. I still found some, some issues with them, but um, certainly these have a few little issues. Eh, who cares? It's a huge game. You know, this is not going to make a big difference, right? But Anyway, not much the French can do. They're pulling their line back a little further, closer and closer to Paris. Um, they abandoned some trenches they had here. It's just not, you know, worth extending the line out there. That wasn't doing them any good. It was just a little bulge out there. And they were able to get a little bit more stiffness over in here. Uh, I'm still regretting having moved the English from a more central position because they have so much supply now. 
they're sitting on 15 supply, they're essentially untouched units, but it's painful to shift and move things around. And, uh, you know, once you get tied into the line like that, if I threw the French up there too, the Germans would just pound through there and, you know, solidify the situation. The coast is important to the English. I don't know what the hell to do if I lose Dieppe and Rune. Uh, I'm out of ports. I can't land anywhere anymore. I think I'd have to start making up rules. So I think the English would be very committed to not losing any more uh, coastal territory anyway. So it's somewhat fitting to them uh, to be where they are. Uh, and the Belgian army is never going to move. There's no reason to eliminate it. That Eliminating it just makes it available to be replaced. Uh, that's uh, disturbing to me. Very disturbing, to tell you the truth. Although it's possible Belgian replacements might come in here. I still don't think they're allowed to do anything unless I attack them. Uh, there's sort of this strange ceasefire in existence, which historically happened for a while, but then the Belgians were broken out. Uh, the Germans attacked to try to prevent that, blah, blah, blah. It didn't happen here. So if you don't follow the historical uh, line, the rules as written allow something kind of unreasonable to happen because they're just ignored. Now, come on. I think they'd attack something, you know? There's no infantry, there's nothing defending them there. And it feels really goofy to me. Well, I went and looked up the online edition of the rules, and, you know, it actually handles the Belgians somewhat reasonably. They can't be left like this. First of all, you have to leave at least 10 strength points of, front of Germans near Brussels to keep them pinned. It doesn't specify what kind of strength points, so... Uh, something like this would keep them in place, I guess. I don't know. Maybe it does, but hey, we made up for it, right? Uh, but it also, on the first turn of October, they're released. I don't know what the hell to do about that because my rules say, hey, they're stuck there forever and I'm expecting some kind of uh, escape. So I'm just going to keep playing the way I am. Uh, Because they would be a tremendous, you know, I mean, certainly I couldn't let them out now. And then, well, what if I throw the German army back there and say, hey, let's make that, uh, I don't know, it's October now, let's make it November, or let's make it January, or something like that. What the hell do I do? You know? <laughs> so, I'm stuck with this ridiculous interpretation because the written rules that come with the game are so lacking in something so clearly necessary. Uh, it kind of makes you wonder, um, because the system's been around for quite a while now, the way these rules were written, people, the, the Schlieffen plan was around, game was around for a while, and I can't imagine that playtests didn't happen where Belgium was left alone like that. It's just, hey, it's there. And when writing, you know, I, I, I could see that question coming up in the Schlieffen plan. Hey, this is ridiculous. How long are they going to stay there? Um, that should, certainly should have factored into this edition. It's also the, the fact that, well, you know, if you buy it, you get the rules with, with mistakes like that. Uh, who knows how many changes there are. But I don't want to go online and try to hunt them all down. There's no change log that I saw available and no reference to one. That's what I would want is just a pure errata uh, to modify it, you know. Uh, that seems to have gone out of style, but for those of us who use paper rules, uh, trying to deal with coordinating between an online electronic version that I cannot read with the depth. I mean, if I had two copies of the rules, I might go through line by line and change the things that were different in them. But I'd rather not do that. Errata is always the way to do things. Um, anyway, it's, uh, it's very disappointing when the paper rules don't manage to uh, have the necessary resources to be updated. Well, it's such a, you know, a historical occurrence in terms of 
you don't know what the Belgians would have done. Maybe they would be locked in there forever. Um, perhaps some sort of truce or negotiations are going on, whatever. No way to tell because what really happened was so different um, with the Allies actually trying to break them out. We'll just keep playing with this as it is. It's got to be bad news for the Allies, though. That's all I have to say. I am throwing some troops in to kind of garrison that border. They should have been there all the time. They probably could have been. These two strength point troops that I've got on, on the line probably aren't doing me a whole lot of advantage. Um, anyway, the Germans extend their, uh, their little bulge a little bit more, or big bulge, whatever. Um, they ran into a wall here during a, a column attack. And they also didn't really gain ground, say, here. Or, well, they didn't take that. It was somewhere else they attacked it. They didn't gain any ground. Um, it's getting tough. Uh, definitely the lack of, uh, the lack of supplies hurts them because they're less likely to provide enough damage to cause the French to retreat. And that means that the French come back with a triple shot. And it's, you know, you, you really want that overwhelming force to just blow the enemy aside. I don't know whether or not I'm going to make it to Paris. Uh, I think pretty unlikely because this is beginning to solidify a little bit. But it seems like every time I throw troops in, I'm losing some. Uh, but the French get more replacements at this point in the game. They're less mobilized, I suppose. Uh, anyway, we'll keep going. Take the Allied turn and see where that puts us. And as we push into the sixth turn of October, uh, well, you know, the French have thrown more troops into the line. There's still weak spots. It's tough to maneuver things around while you're under an attack. Is You can't equalize the line. Equalizing the line is something that you know, I was complaining about, ah, I don't want to do that, where things are. Well, it's really tough to actually do completely because you get different strength units and everything. Um, I guess you could filter guys in and out of the headquarters as to do it, but that means that you've got all those units out for a little while. Uh, but where you're under an assault like here, you know, it, it's just not going to happen. Um, you're trying to react. You can move things maybe a hex from zone to zone. So you got things like this that aren't terribly strong. Plus you got to worry about, well, how am I equalized against this? I've got to throw more strength in to face, uh, you know, where I've got a lot of enemy units that could attack, but that could devolve into multiple attacks against lighter units and leave the crest alone and kind of leave a bulge in there. There's just so many different options in play here that really... You know, whatever you throw up as a line, the enemy is going to find some way to kind of try to crack it if you're weak. Uh, and the Germans are able to get good numbers on it. Whether or not they're going to be able to break it without the supplies, that's a tough call. I do have a few left. I didn't use everything. I've kept four supply points loud. Uh, mainly that's for if I want to do a big stack, a mobile column attack, um, to set up a second attack. I found that, well, it's a big deal to have those guys supplied uh, just because you're not going to get the overwhelming numbers otherwise. But even when I do that, it's just a column attack. It can be halted uh, by, you know, bad die rolls going, going in, in the place. I also have some dudes heading over into the Brussels area to defend that. I'm going to load this one up uh, because the next one might be kind of interesting. We're going to discuss, you know, the, the Schlieffen plan. Oh, no, it doesn't end in this next one. Yeah. All right, I'll put it, I'll put it all on one. Keep the uh, number of bids down. Germans continue punching through, widening the hole. We've got uh, the British calves still holding out here, but we've... Got Germans down in here. We're going to have to pull back. There's no question. This is good terrain, which is one of the reasons I've been able to hold it. But i got to I got to stretch the line a little bit more here. This, too, is being widened. In a sense, widening is good for both of them because they're both out of 
troop so it smooths it out it makes it you know less of a, a sharp angle up and down and and closer to the kind of front line that you'd want to see but it's not terribly good for the french to see the germans pushing forward towards uh towards paris although they haven't gained any they haven't gotten any closer uh, essentially my decision here is i'm not going to make it to paris and be able to take out these big guns during the Schlieffen plan. I don't know that Paris is really my goal. My goal is destruction of the army, to tell you the truth. But Paris is a lot of points towards the demoralization, so it's kind of nice. But largely, I'm just trying to wipe out that French army. And you can see, it's mostly gone. I mean, not mostly, but there's a lot of it missing. And there is not a lot of German army missing. Uh, unfortunately, I suspect for the Germans, the rate has to uh, somehow catch up and improve because it's really tough to defend uh, before you have these trenches and the German mass is just moving forward. A counterattack just doesn't seem possible. I'm too spread out. I have no reserve to throw it at any point in the line. And there's really nowhere. This isn't a tight little salient here. This is a rather broad front. There's nowhere that I can just pinch it off and say, ah, I've done something big here that he's got to react to. Um, he could just kind of subvert any kind of incursion into it. Well, the meat grinder keeps continuing. And, you know, I mean, it's not like the Germans are taking losses here that are heavier than the French. They're actually able to inflict more than they receive, as well as gaining ground. Can see they've kind of flattened this out. They made an attack over here, which is going to be kind of a pain for the English to choose how to react to. They're getting encircled here. That's a real problem. Even if they're entrenched, uh, the encirclement, I believe, destroys the effects of the entrenchment. So they pretty much have to slip around and try to maybe do a counterattack or something and solidify the line. One good thing is the English have tons and tons of supplies left. Uh, the other thing, obviously, we're seeing the effect of the lack of the Belgian army. Uh, you know, I, I looked over, wow, they got 20 supply points left. That would be huge. They couldn't shift it to anyone, but they could bleed the Germans heavily. Uh, at this point, their forces are essentially doubled in comparison to what the French and Germans have because they actually have ammo. Well, as we drift out of October, the English counterattack was not terribly effective. They combined with these French units, uh, French out of supply, had mm, 21 strength points, I believe. Uh, the Germans, I think, were at 24, unless they retreated. But they have a big enough stack, as they do almost every year here. If the French could get enough force, they could have perhaps forced a retreat. To not retreat, and if you don't retreat, well, you take less, lo you take more losses, but you also do more casualties, and that that in the counterattack, and that that's really the thing that they were able to do twice as many casualties, two to four, uh, between the two. Uh, you know, the English took three of them, so it wasn't as big a deal as the French taking more. The French are really getting hammered and are low on troops, but still, you kind of don't want to see the English taking these kind of losses because they're not going to be able to recover them terribly well either. Uh, looking at our, our, our front, we've kind of pushed almost to Reims, where there's a fortress and a big unit. Uh, so that's going to be a tough to expand any further in that direction. The English wall is basically made it tough to expand further in that direction, but we still have kind of a bulge in here that we can keep punk punching through and trying to, to push out a little bit. Uh, in some ways, though, the Germans are kind of low on troop strength at this point. And I look at what's coming, and it's a lot of French and not too many Germans. Um, so I think the tide is going to start shifting. I don't think the Germans can keep punching through once... Uh, once we hit November. We'll see. I mean, they've still got a little bit of play to push this out further. All right, up this one goes.